with Kelly and Mark. Today, film star and author Ava Mendez. Plus, performing his new single, Roots, Callum Scott. Also, Record Breaker Week continues with a talented pooch and a lot of socks on a lot of feet. Watch me. September 19th, 2024, September roaring, roaring away from Roaring us. away from yes. us. Welcome to the show. Hey, um, when the kids brought home their lunches from school and there was food left, did you ever finish any of that stuff? Um, well, first of all, as you probably don't know, two of our kids couldn't bring school lunches to school. Right. So... <laughs> There were no school lunches. There were no school lunches. Yes. Yeah. How about the third one that the I, I third, don't know? I mean, the third one. We do have three. Yeah, we have three kids. Third one, <laughs> he polished off his lunch. Yeah. So there was never any leftovers. The to bring reason home. I ask is nearly a third of parents polish off their kids' lunchbox leftovers for dinner. Huh. A third of the parents eat that their kids' lunchbox. That would have been a good option. I would have Rejects for dinner. Yeah. According to parents, although more than one in five said their children's lunch is more gourmet than they had as a kid. That's true. Parents estimate 21% 20 of their child's lunch comes home uneaten at the end of the day on average. When asked kids what their least favorite food was, parents listed these things. Snap peas, 40%. Green beans, 36%. Along with tuna salad and hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't. Don't send your kids to school with aromatic lunches like that. You know, if the lunchbox opens and it smells like farts. Yeah, you're not going to be the popular kid in school. You're not going to have friends. No. <laughs> Nobody's going to trade lunch with you. Yeah. Did, did your mom make you... She made you nice. Uh, you had yeah. nice. You had nice lunches. You know, my mom was a great cook, but I never got like the gourmet. You would think I would get like leftover lasagna Osobuco. or osobuco or rigatoni or sometimes did, pig's feet. What did you get? Um, I would get like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh. Or yeah, I, I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Oh well, you love that. I loved it. If it was like lunch, it was never like a gourmet. Hey, what are you having? I want that kind of thing. Yeah. Nobody was like you know, wanted my lunch. Nobody wanted my lunch. No. <laughs> including me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother would make the lunches the night before. Mm -hmm. I've talked about this many times, and it was, you know, she would put the grape jelly on the white bread and cream cheese on the other side. Oof. And she would let it, you know, coagulate and, and uh, ferment in there overnight, <laughs> always next to the onion that was cut in half and left unwrapped. Yeah. And so that everything had a light onion scent <laughs> and flavor. In the, it, was, it was an obligation. Yes. It was an obligation. Yeah. She liked Pizza Fridays. Oh. Yeah, because Pizza, you know, Fridays we had pizza. At the school. At the school. Mm -hmm. So Pizza Fridays was a big deal. Oh. Yeah, I love pizza. What was, what was the shape of your pizza in school? It was the, it was the rectangle. rectangle. It was yeah. a giant rectangle. Rectangle, yeah. yeah. And some days it would be extra cheesy. There was no telling. You know, it, it depended on how I, how the food service company yeah. made it. But some some days it would be such a treat. Um, I I was, yeah, we would have that. We would have, um, what else would we have? Like Sloppy Joes, I loved at, at school, Sloppy Joes. Mm. The hamburgers were good enough. Mm. There's not a bad hamburger. You could eat a hamburger. It doesn't matter where it's from. It's always good. Um, my school had like stewed tomatoes. Yeah, stewed tomatoes. What was, was that about? Thing. Yeah. Stewed tomatoes. That yeah, was... I never touched that. No, nobody did It looked that. like, Those have like never a crime touched. scene. <laughs> <laughs> My senior year in high school, all I ate were um, the hostess. Little Debbie. Nope, Little. nope. The glaze, like a honey bun. Yeah. yeah. You remember that? I would have like two or three of those uh -huh. for lunch with a, with a 
carton and a half of milk, and then I'd go play soccer. And, and during my soccer games, I'd always pull up with cramps. And my coach, after like the third or fourth game, is like, what are you eating for lunch? I'm like, I'm eating Hostess honey buns. What are you talking about? He goes, you can't have that before a game. Really? Yeah. Because of the sugar. It's just bad. It's just not, I mean, they're huh. good. It's a good, it, I eat dessert for lunch. Uh, we had this thing in our school called mods. Two mods equaled one period. A lot of early, lunch, though. a lot of the lunches happened at lunchtime. It was the majority of the lunches. And so if you had like a noon or a noon 30 lunch mod, you would stand in line. We would always stand in line just to buy the French fries. My high school had a French fry maker that would rival McDonald's. It was the whole <laughs> point of going to the school. And you would stand in line solely to get the French fries. But usually, halfway through the line, your lunch period was over, and you would have to leave with nothing. Oh. So that was... Wow. Times were hard back yeah. then. <laughs> How did you survive? I don't know. How do you survive? Somehow I got out of there. And... <laughs> Um, so, did you hear about this? There is a, a, a bargain hunting eight year old girl who drives herself 10 miles to the local Target. <laughs> She's in Ohio and she was determined to get to Target to go shopping. She wanted to uh, get some, she wanted to get some, I guess, new school clothes. Uh, and she's, uh, her parents, I guess, dubbed her a shopaholic. She gave them quite a scare because she took the family car and uh, drove to Target. Ten hey, miles. How about this? Now, I'm not advocating for this in any way, but you got to hand it to a kid that is that age that, A, can reach the gas pedal and the steering wheel at the same right. time. It wasn't a tractor and or something. B, like that, right? No. And B, can figure out how, how to, to get, get to Target. Yeah. Like, Back in those days, I was in the back seat. I couldn't see over anything, so I had no idea. Like, you would just get in the car and miraculously arrive at the mall. It was like you might as well have been on a space shuttle. <laughs> That's how it went. But this kid found her... The, the only... Uh, uh, it was a, uh, the family's 2020 Nissan Rouge. Um, it was 7 a.m. on a Sunday. Uh, her parents reported her missing. Um... And the only, the only accident she had was she smashed into a small mailbox. Oh, that's, so fun. that's fun. <laughs> but other than that, no charges are being filed. But I just think that is incredible. Incredible. Industrious. Yeah, industrious. Yeah, sure. But again, I'm, I'm not, advocate, I'm not yeah. endorsing this in any way. <laughs> no. I'm just saying it's remarkable what the pull of school clothes will do. <laughs> yes. Uh, ten ways to respond to someone who's giving you the silent treatment, according to psychologists. <laughs> this is my favorite subject. <laughs> All right. Reasons you may be getting the silent treatment. Uh, the person might have a desire to avoid conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, they're overwhelmed emotionally. Mm -hmm. Attempt to manipulate. Oh. Punish. And exert power and control over the other person. Those last three, yes. Go. <laughs> Attention seeking attempt. Four. Hurt feelings. Five. <laughs> Lack of communication skills. Six. Need to think and process something before proceeding. Now, how to respond to someone that's giving you the silent treatment? Okay. Keep calm and patient. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yes, keep calm and patient. Give them space. Um, Open the door for communication. Ask for dialogue without pressure can make the other person feel safe and sharing when ready. Number four, acknowledge the silence. It's pretty quiet in here, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> acknowledge their feelings. Sometimes you have to name it if you want to start to tame it. Oh. Yeah. Name it. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> um, ask for clarification gently. Sweetie. Is there something you'd like to talk about? How's that? No. <laughs> Reflect on your own actions. You know, at my age, at my age, anything that happens, like if I feel like something's wrong and I'm like, I feel like, well, that person's wrong, I can usually find three or four reasons what my part it is in it. Mm -hmm. So I, that's, that's what I've learned at my age. So I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty responsible. For this. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes yes but means that would no. Take, that would take introspection. That's correct. Introspection. Correct. Yes. yes. Reflect on your relationship dynamics. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
seek professional help. <laughs> <laughs> like at what point, like after what, three days, do you seek professional help? I don't oh, know. I don't know. I would say. I remember one time you told me that we were having a, like a disagreement and you said, if you, if you continue doing whatever, I'm not gonna speak to you for the rest of the day. And I said, and I, th I remember I said something funny. I don't remember exactly what I said. You're like, oh, is that a, is that a punishment? Is that a punishment? <laughs> I think it was football Sunday. I'm like, great. <laughs> We're not talking anyway. I might as well go, go in. Let's go in. Every now and then you got to go in. Got to go in and have that tough conversation. Um, I don't like the silent, I don't like the silent treatment. <laughs> to this are there women out in the audience who are dating yes. anyone yeah. so women are using this new dating rule do you know about this it's called the 666 dating rule oh. now imagine my surprise I always thought the 666 dating rule was you check behind your partner's ear and if there's no 666 you can date them no 666 dating rule means uh, men who are six feet tall, have six pack abs, and make over six figures. Oh, very shallow. Good luck. <laughs> That's like 0.01% of the population. A unicorn. Yeah, it's a unicorn. <laughs> They're saying these uh, dating apps have made it impossible, really impossible, because you're probably going to wind up with, you know, a pair of twos. <laughs> the picture is a 666. Six, six. The picture may be 666. Six, six, six. The reality is a 1.52.5. You know, experts do not recommend daters should... Uh, Experts recommend that daters should be more selective when deciding what's, what apps to use and who to choose. Yep. But being too picky can backfire. That is, yeah. Leaving you home alone on a Friday night. That's right. Night. I always recommend, like, when you go fishing. Okay. Oh, I love this. When go. you go fishing, mm -hmm. you don't go fishing for, like, you know, a big, you know, swordfish. A with great white shark. A great white shark with, you know, a little bobber and a worm. Like you gotta understand what tackle you're fishing with to catch the fish that you're that you're gonna get. Yeah. I'm not saying lower. I'm not saying lower your no, expectations. No, I think what he's saying is is be that be realistic. We are, we are attracting the two, the 1.5 and the 0.05. That's what the tackle we're fishing with? Um, all I know is I landed a mermaid. Oh. <laughs> so what happens, what I really realize what happens to the sailor is that the mermaid draws him into the water and drowns him at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Let's go to the billboard. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I think it's time. And on, that, <laughs> and on that note, we've got a huge show today. Ava Mendez is here. Ava! And we're in for a treat. I heard them um, rehearsing. Callum Scott performs. Uh, That's wow. one, what a beautiful voice. Yeah. And we've been waiting. Record Breaker Week continues when we try to break the record for the most socks removed by a dog in one minute. The number to beat is 21. And I understand from behind the scenes that most of our staff got a pedicure for this stunt. So I suppose wow. everybody at home with your WikiFeed accounts, get ready. <laughs> get ready to judge. <laughs> We're watching you, Wiki Feet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to play. So <laughs> okay, let's say hello to Karen Gann from St. Petersburg, Florida, who watches the show on WTVT. She says she wants to stun me because she wants the bragging rights that comes with it. Yes. All right. How you doing, Karen? 
I'm very good, thank you. How are you? How was St. Pete? You know, I, 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 did, um, I did my last semester of college there at the St. Pete campus uh, for USF. Um, I lived on St. Pete Beach. It was beautiful. Do you go near St. Pete Beach? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's not far away at all. Do they have? Do they still have that bar on the beach called Woody's? Uh, Woody, Woody's bar on the beach? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot, and they change all the time. I honestly don't know. Yeah, there was a big bird that used to walk up, like a, a what do you call them? The big tall ones. A what? Stork. Not a stork, like an egret. A hair, like a, no, a big like bar would walk through the bar. I thought that was always really nice. <laughs> I was like, did I have too many drinks, or am I actually seeing a bird in the bar? <laughs> All right, listen, you know, you know how this game works. You're giving us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to figure out which statement is true, and if you stump me, you'll win this. Oh. And that. <laughs> Here are Karen's two statements. I've watched The Little Mermaid more than 100 times, or I've watched Dirty Dancing more than 100 times. Um, Karen, do you have grandkids? Yes, I do. And do they like that movie, The Little Mermaid? Yes, they do. And do you care for your grandkids a lot? Do you like, do you get, you have, you babysit them? No. No. No, but just when I do visit with them, we've watched it over and over. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I, we've, we've done that a lot. Um, Dirty Dancing, was that, a, was that a movie that you loved? That was a movie that my daughter loved. When she was little, we watched it over and over. She just loved the singing, dancing. It, it was fun. Yeah. Did you, did, you, did you have a thing for Patrick Swayze? <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. Not, nothing to not like about him. Okay. Did you ever practice the lift in the ocean? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> All right. It's harder than it looks. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, back in the day for us to watch a movie a, over 100 times, we'd kind of have to watch, I mean, it'd be harder for us to watch that stuff yeah. over 100 times. Right. But when the grand, you know, our kids, for sure, when we had VHS, VHS tapes. tapes and then DVDs and then now, forget right. about it, forget about it. I'm going to say you watched The Little Mermaid more than 100 times. Wrong. Um, <laughs> talking to you for the rest of the show. <laughs> Congrats, you won a mug and a t-shirt. Now let's see if we can win you a valuable trip. It's time for Great Getaways Travel Trivia. we can win Karen. All right. Montego Bay, wow. Jamaica. Seven days, six nights. It's all inclusive, plus two spa treatments. It's a prize valued at seventy-three hundred dollars. You have twenty seconds, and only one guest. Karen, good luck. Karen, here we go. We've had Jeff Bridges on the show. What breed of dog did Jeff say he has? Okay. What breed of dog does Jeff Bridges have? Yes. Yes. He okay, said it on the show. Five seconds. Take a guess. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a cavapoo. Yeah. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Karen. Sorry. But listen, there's still exciting news. You'll now be entered into our grand prize drawing for a 13-day voyage to Antarctica, valued at more than $40. And now you and Alexa 
vacuum member of our studio audience will each receive a Roomba vacuum cleaner from mm. iRobot. So please pick a number between 1 and 161. Seven. 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 when we try to break the record for the most socks removed by a dog in one minute. A performance by Callum Scott. And coming up next, Ava Mendez. I know, it's hard to believe that I don't do that professionally. <laughs> <laughs> On tomorrow's show, Kelsey Grammer is here. And Record Breaker Week continues when we, along with Art Moore and Science Bob, try to break the record for the most spun simulti simul simultaneous Bernoulli's principal toilet paper launchers. Yeah. The number to beat is 50. I don't even know what that, that means. I have no idea. I am excited yeah. to be yeah, here for be it. Excited, yeah. Yes. Plus, we're going to say a special goodbye and congratulations on his retirement to our very own Art Moore. And then we're going to welcome him right back. <laughs> we're gonna welcome him right back because we're not accepting his resignation <laughs> here she comes she's a movie star she's a mom and now she's the author of her first children's book desi mommy and the never-ending worries please welcome back to the show ava mendez say cheese She truly got confused as to which direction yes. to walk. No, absolutely. You guys are so lovely. I, thank you for that warm welcome. Yeah. And you. <laughs> we haven't seen each other we for a while. We haven't seen each other. Like, we were at a restaurant. In a minute. Yeah, it's and been a while. I used to, like, every time I came on your show, I used to dress for you as, as we women do. We dress for each other. We do. Yeah. And um, so, what you think? <laughs> I, I, you beat me no, to it. I was like, I was dying like, over this. But I'm, I'm like looking. It's very autumnal. Do you autumnal. are you an, great are you an autumn girl? Do you like the fall? Um, no, no. Same. Yeah, Same. I'm, a, I'm a summer girl. Yeah, yeah. Same. 69 is freezing to me. Don't really? even. Seventy is borderline, right? Very right. old. Yes. Yeah. Seventy right. is borderline. Mm -hmm freezing but so I'll how, take how do you it. feel here in New York are you freezing uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's actually it's not bad it's right gonna now warm it's gonna up did you ever live in New York yeah. did you ever spend any time in New York um, I spent a lot of time here yeah but I didn't actually like you know lay my roots is that yeah yeah, yeah yeah I don't know I didn't actually live live here but right I did, lived here you know what do you I do when you come here well, now, I mean, times times have changed, Kelly. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, times uh, are tough. <laughs> no, I do a lot of playgrounds. I have two kids, uh, eight, and my older one just turned ten. Oh, oh my gosh. A few days ago. Double digits. I know, and I'm, I'm so freaked mm -hmm. and excited, but ten, oh, my God, it just sounds so, it's just crazy. Anyway, um, so we're still in that playground uh -uh. kind of phase. Yeah. Oh, yeah, do, you like the, well. do you like going to the playground? No. So, but I do it because there's so many life lessons, right? Yes, there's and a hierarchy at playgrounds. Totally, and, and it's really hard not to, I don't know about you guys, but it's hard not to get involved as a mom. Yeah. Especially yeah. if it's like, I'm at two girls, if there's like boys, yes. and then I just kind of make myself seen, like just yeah. stand back and be like, yeah. Um, but you no, I try not to yeah. get involved, but I just, but no, I, I don't love it. I don't love it, no. It, I mean, it is like, it's a, it's a, uh, it's... We can all agree, uh, very boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 
it's and funny watch because... your kids. And it's pretty loud. It's pretty loud. <laughs> it's pretty loud. I was telling Ryan, my my man, I was telling him about the, uh, you know, th that I might actually talk to you guys about the playground and all, um, because he goes, yeah, but he goes, but why would you like it? There's literally nothing there for you. And I'm like, that's <laughs> such a good point. Exactly. There's, that's it. There's exactly. nothing there for me. There you go, coffee. Me. Oh, right. So this was one day. Well, um, that looks like a nice playground, though. Where's this? No, this was a very nice playground. We were living in London up until two days ago. Oh, and, my gosh. Yeah, and there's this beautiful, like, park. Anyway, so I would go and I'd have my coffee there and That's nice. watch them play. Yeah, is it nice, though? Yeah, is I mean, it? having a cup of coffee. I'd like to have my coffee in my bedroom <laughs> or, you know. But yeah. anyway, it, that was... Uh, it, it, there, there are worse things for hey, sure. Hey, before you became an actress, you worked at a mall. Oh, yeah. The Glendale Galleria, people. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you were discovered? No. no. Do you know what that is? Where did you work? Yeah. Um, you I work? worked in every store. When I was 15, I got my worker's permit, uh -huh. and I have, like, the most amazing mom who yeah. was always, like, real independence comes when you make your own money as a woman. That's so true. Make 100%. your own money. And I yeah. was just, like... I got my marching orders, um, and I worked at every store in the mall. As, yeah, Did ridiculous. you work at Marigo Round? I worked at... Oh, my God! No, but I worked at <laughs> Judy's. You remember Judy's? Yeah, yeah. And Contempo? Oh, Contempo Casual? Was there, was was there ever a casual. place that you wanted to work, but you didn't, you didn't yeah, work? Yeah, I was really bummed, because I worked at a hot dog on a stick. I worked at, like, retail. I worked at, you know... Uh, but yeah, I never worked at Orange Julius. Oh my God, I love Do you Orange guys Julius. Orange Julius? You just watch it going into the cup. Yes, and a little creamy. I wanted to be a part it of that. It was so mesmerizing no. that Orange Julius. It's machine. delicious. It's delicious. I never had one. Oh, oh come on. Yeah. I know. I Give know. your woman an Orange <laughs> Julius. Do they, you they still have me, you they still make, have Orange Julius? Can't you make me like a? Mo I'm sure if we got the TikTok. Yeah. Did you say the TikTok? The TikTok. Amazing. Yeah. We don't have the TikTok. It's but, the TikTok. No. But if we were to get the yeah. TikTok, I think there's probably an Orange Julius recipe because they teach oh, you. Right. Apparently, it's a learning aid. It's a what? A learning aid. TikTok. You can learn how to do things oh, on TikTok. Oh, right. Apparently. Yeah, I, don't yeah. I don't know. I, I just actually started it like... Uh, yesterday, I think. Really? I yeah, and, and it's, so, uh, it's, it's not going well. It's not going no, well. No, right. no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it needs too much attention. And she was like, I named my brain. No and I kidding. just thought, I'm not going to disclose that she's very private at 10. She's very yeah, like, course. please don't tell anybody what, what my name, my brain's name is. Anyway, so I'm like, I won't, but can I please tell this story? Because it's so genius, and it's what really helped me or sparked this idea. Okay. But the idea that, that she already knew somewhat that... That her brain was like separate than her, or it could be, and she yeah. could kind of be the observer. I was like, this is such a helpful tool. So when she gets, you know, she's, she has a lot of anxiety, and I feel mm -hmm. terrible because I have... Everybody I'm has so, it. Everybody I, has I, it, yeah. I, I think I'd I think... have it a little more, though. No? <laughs> I think, no, not like that. I'm just, I'm just I'm yeah. so like, and I think I inherited it from my poor mom and her, you know what I mean? It's just like, sure. anyway, so I'm, in, uh, I'm passing it down, and I'm trying to like talk about talk about it obviously and you know um but it's helped because i'm like i refer to her brain the name and it helps kind of um disconnect a bit to those negative thoughts that she can like have mm -hmm. so i wrote this book and in this book it's desi a little girl it's basically a buddy story with this little girl in her brain mm -hmm. and it's like she realizes that the the brain could either be a bully to her and send her all these negative sure. thoughts and like mm -hmm. oh, yeah. go and she can go on that yeah. spiral, mm -hmm. or it could be her best friend and she can like you know tell it what to think and then it becomes a you know works for her, not against. I wish her. we had those tools back when we were right. young. Actually, yeah. I, I was just going to say. Yeah. I A children's book, but I actually think it's a very a, like an adult read. Yeah. I think adults could utilize this too yeah. yes. in their practical yeah, life. Yeah, feelings I'm still feelings aren't always facts. Right. They're don't just, believe everything you think. Don't believe everything <laughs> right? you think. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm always like, you know, yeah, exactly. Um, will you come back and see us in the summer when it's not so cold? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Desi, mommy, and the never ending worries is available in English and in Spanish. It's on sale. Mày sợ tao chưa? <cười> Rồi, tụi em bên đây Hello Sao? Đứng đây Ôi, 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 ôi
Đó <cười> Ê, Bây giờ ví dụ mình chọc hai con đi Chọc hai con mình đánh một lượt luôn nè Ôi đó 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 Rồi nhảy xuống đây Thôi chọc ba con luôn nè Mày hai con trước đi Chưa xích tới xíu Đó chén đầu đó Ôi ơi lộn Xích tới Xíu nữa <cười> mày nể tao chưa <cười> lên leo vào liền hồi nãy là hai con chúng ta đến với ba con để cho nó hiện ra đi mình dụ ba con cho các bạn coi chém mỗi tay luôn nè đây Ây da da, tụi tôi bình tĩnh, bình tĩnh, bình tĩnh Ủa sao cái con kia đứng yên rồi Phan Quang xíu đi xíu dụ nó Đó, cho tụi bay nãy đánh tao Bây giờ tao cốc đầu từng đứa hết Tại đây, lại đây Đợi xuống Đó À, hồi nãy giờ mình hoàn thành uh... Mình hoàn thành nhiệm vụ rồi Thôi, đi nhận nhiệm vụ tiếp thôi Chờ chị nha mấy đứa Sao để một ông bên đây, một ông bên kia đi Nó đi qua đi lại hoài Để tôi phụ bạn, để tôi phụ bạn Để tôi chém đó 